The grommets that we're going to be using on our robot are going to be modeled as a revolved feature. So we'll go ahead and begin by opening up a new part file and we'll start out by sketching on the top plane. So we'll click on our top plane, click on sketch, and here we go. The uh, grommets are going to be supplied by McMaster Car. Here's the part number down here. You can look it up on the web. McMaster Car also supplies all the dimensions and a rough drawing that we're going to use to model our part here in SOLIDWORKS. Now the theory behind a revolved part, we're going to take a closed profile like a square or a circle or any closed profile that you can imagine and we'll revolve that around an axis which will create the solid. Now to do that we're going to only model one half, the right half of this drawing using these dimensions down here. So we'll begin by creating a rough approximation of the right half, ignoring the roundovers. So as I'm sketching, do you see the yellow constraints to the right of my cursor? I'm using those to my advantage because they automatically constrain the lines as I'm sketching them on my sketch. And there we go. So now here's a rough approximation of the grommet. The roundovers are these small radius edges you can see here on the uh, McMaster card drawing. We're going to add those later on. But right now let's go ahead and constrain our, our sketch. We're going to begin by drawing a center line. So we'll go ahead and draw a center line from the origin to the center of this first vertical line and another one from that line to the center of this other vertical line. We'll go ahead and hit escape and exit out of the center line command. Now we can click on these center lines and add a horizontal constraint to each of them. Okay, what other lines are out of alignment? They should all be either vertical or horizontal. So this guy needs a vertical constraint and this top line needs a horizontal constraint. Alright, now looking at the McMaster car sketch, the top is symmetrical with the bottom and we're going to use that to our advantage. Whenever we can use symmetry, let's go ahead and use it. So let's go ahead and select this top line and we'll hold down control which allows us to select any other sketch object. So holding control, I'm going to left click on this bottom line and I'll release control and this little menu pops up if I don't move the mouse too fast that has a list of the constraints I can add to these two objects. If you do move the mouse too fast or move away, it's also here on the left side. So we'll go ahead and make these two collinear, which means they're, they're on the same line as each other. And I think that's it with constraints. So we'll begin, we'll now uh, dimension this to, to a size. In order to dimension the grommet, I like dimensioning my sketches inside out. So we'll start with the smallest inner dimension, which will A, which will be A, and then I'll go to E and then B. Um, the reason I don't like going from outside in, if we begin with B, I'll show you right here. If we draw our sketch too big, our rough approximation too big, it sometimes has the tendency to provide you with unexpected results. So we'll go ahead and dimension this. Now half of B, uh, B is one inch and that's the outside diameter of the grommet so we can do a half of B which is half an inch but uh, also our, our input field here acts as a calculator so we can actually type in B which is one inch and divide that by two which we all know is half an inch. Now when I dimension that, did you s notice that this line here is now ahead of B, which is not what we want. So we can uh, go ahead and actually click on it and move it back into place. Or we can just begin by dimensioning from the inside out, which is what I like doing. So we'll go ahead and click on this dimension and just delete it. So we'll start off with A, which is 9 16ths of an inch, 
so we'll go ahead and right click smart dimension and we'll dimension from the origin to the first vertical line the inside diameter and we'll click out here in space and we'll set that as 916 so like I said this field is a calculator so we can uh, put our 916 in parentheses 9 divided by 16 divided by 2 because we're only doing half of the sketch and this is what we get 281 thousandths now since all our dimensions are fractional let's go ahead and change our dimensions to fractional we'll change from decimal inch to fractional inch to do that we go here to options and under document properties you can click on the units and for the uh, it ha it, right now we're using decimal so for fractions we'll make our smallest fraction a 32nd so we'll just type in 32 and hit OK and so now our 281 thousandths is now 930 seconds so we'll go ahead and dimension E which is the panel hole diameter which is three quarters of an inch so we'll click on the origin and click on the smaller inner vertical line and we'll click down here and this is a calculation field so we can do our parentheses 3 divided by 4 divided by 2 and that gives us 3 eighths um, we can also just type in 3 eighths if we can do the math in our head and now for this outer dimension B go ahead and click on this line and our origin and B is one inch so we can just type in half an inch 0.5 and that's half an inch now so let's go ahead and dimension the uh, vertical lines here so we'll begin on the inside here with a D which is the panel thickness that's 1 16th so 1 divided by 16 and we don't have to divide this by 2 because we're using the full full length here and the overall thickness so we'll click on the top and the bottom and that's 5 16 alright let's go ahead and clean up our dimensions a little bit we'll bring them in so we can actually see them as we zoom into the part all right and here we go now we have the round overs now they didn't dimension the round overs because they're not a real critical feature so what we're going to do we're going to use the sketch fillet sketch feature and it's going to ask for entities to fill it so we can click on two lines that we want to fill it or we can just click on simply just click on the corner that we want to fill it and we'll leave it at the uh, default hundred thousandths of an inch since it's not a critical dimension and we'll go ahead and green check mark and now we have our round overs and our profile fully dimensioned so we'll go ahead and green check mark and now we need to add our axes of rotation so we'll create another vertical center line uh, we can just click out in space it doesn't really matter where we click also if you want to end a line you can just double click and that ends the uh, current line command so if you're drawing a series of lines and you want to stop here you can just double click and that stops the line command and we'll just delete those. So we can go ahead and exit our sketch now and in our features tab we'll go to the revolved base and it's going to ask what sketch do we want to revolve so we can just click on the sketch we just had and it just chose for us some arbitrary axes of revolution so we can go ahead and delete that and we'll click on our vertical line that we created and here is our grommet now uh, with the revolve feature we can choose how many degrees we want to actually revolve the part and uh, just like the extruded base there's uh, the select contours thin feature and other directions that we can use 
but we want a full, full rotation, so we'll do 360 degrees and green check mark. So here is our grommet. Now let's go ahead and change it from this ugly gray to the actual color it's going to be and, uh, and, and to the actual material it is. So we can uh, right click on material and uh, our rubber on the McMaster Car website it says it's styrene butadiene rubber so that is uh, under here we can go to edit material and look under the rubbers so styrene butadiene rubber SBR so we'll go ahead and select that it has our density and tensile strength in here we can apply that and close this and it's now a white color and uh, in order to change the colors you can right click on the part click on the colorful ball and click on the part and now we'll change it from a white to a charcoal gray which is a more accurate representation of our grommets so here is our grommet now to double check that we uh, did our sketch right, we can go to the Evaluate tab and we can measure. So if we click on a round surface here, it'll give us the area, the diameter, which is 9 sixteenths, which we have here is A. Uh, we can click out here on the white space. We can click on a little flat section here. It has a diameter of 1 inch, which is our B dimension. And if we click on the inside, we have a diameter of three quarters of an inch which is our panel hole diameter here so we did everything right so here is our grommet